This weekend, cities all over the U.S. saw protesters take to the streets, continuing to voice their anger over recent killings by police. In Berkeley, California last night, a second round of violent protests as demonstrators once again smashed windows and tried to block a major freeway. Authorities say Sunday night's protests started peacefully, but then someone vandalized an electronics store. And on Saturday night, protests took a violent turn when people started to throw rocks, pipes, and other things at police officers. Some protesters broke away from the main group, vandalizing cars and breaking windows. Authorities responded by using tear gas to break up the crowds. Police say at least six people were arrested Saturday night. Here in the Circle City, people are also expressing their concerns about the recent events. Organized through social media, more than 100 people gathered for the Black Lives Matter rally asking for change and equality. RTV6's Ebony Monet shows us the demonstration and one young man trying to document it all. Bundled up, standing shoulder to shoulder. Sunday, people gather on Indianapolis's north side to declare Black Lives Matter. I want them to know that their life matters. The crowd is made up of community leaders, concerned mothers and fathers, and 17-year-old Patrick Calvert capturing it all. Just seeing the emotion on the faces of some of the people, it kind of just touched me personally. The high school senior with hopes of becoming a journalist drives about an hour from Newcastle to document protests and rallies in Indianapolis. The protesters have been really nice to me. I try to get one-on-one -on -one with them and uh, I don't know, it just feels good to be a part of, and I'm glad that I'm documenting it, all of it. Recent national cases of unarmed black males killed by police has parents in Indianapolis concerned about the safety of their own children. I have to tell my son how to carry himself when he walks down the street so that they don't think that he has a gun. Uh, because my son uh, has a disability if he's nonverbal and he doesn't comply, not because he's not wanting to, to listen to police, but because of his diagnosis. Uh, is he going to end up an outline in chalk, and am I going to get a call at 2 o'clock in the morning? Grandmother Amanda Oliver calls this the new civil rights movement. Back then, you know, we fought for voting rights and things of that nature, but now we're speaking for, for just to be able to just survive and have our children survive. At the end of the day, you have to have a plan. A plan to make sure young people feel connected to the city they live in, that there's opportunity for education and economics, and that we can lessen the opportunity for us to be on the negative side of history with police and community. And with this movement fueled by social media, speakers say the real work starts when the crowds disperse. They're actually trying to fix the problems, find out how to. That's another touching aspect of it. That was Ebony Monet reporting. Indy 10 is a group that organized a die-in Saturday night on Monument Circle in honor of Eric Garner. And tomorrow, leaders are hosting a community conversation.